Hello and welcome to The Bond Economist. My name is Aradeep Nandi. And if you're watching this in January, a very happy new year. The question that we are asking in this video is, is it also going to be a happy new year for India's growth? Now, a professional hazard in our line of work is that economists are regularly expected to give forecasts. And very often, we get it wrong. And then people do the whole shame, shame thing like in Game of Thrones. But here's the thing. How is it that economists arrive at forecasts in the first place? After all, uh, we don't really have a formula. We can't jab things in some kind of sophisticated calculator. Uh, we don't even have the luxury of looking to the skies and saying, oh, Rahu is crossing uh, Jupiter, then India's growth must be 6%. So how do economists come up with forecasts? Now, of course, if you have political biases or you just want to give a forecast for the shock value of it, that's a different story. But generally, the right way to do it is um, essentially a three-step process. First, judge how the economy is currently performing. Is growth picking up? Is it moderating? Are there any problems that are ongoing? Second, judge the general health of the economy, just like the vital signs that doctors monitor. Blood pressure, cholesterol, vitamin levels, are they doing fine? What we in economics call macro fundamentals. Things that have developed over the years, not something that's happened over the past one or two years. And then the third, and this is the most crucial bit, you have to make some assumptions. You have to make assumptions on, say, how global growth is going to be, will interest rates be coming down or going up globally, um, how are oil prices going to behave, uh, how monsoons are going to be, uh, what are the political and economic events that are there on the calendar, uh, how do we think the economy will react to those, and then economists say, okay, under these assumptions, this is our forecast. If those assumptions change, or if reality turns out to be different, well, then you also have to update your forecast. So the next time you hear an economist say, oh, India's growth is going to be 5% or 6% or 7%, know that their forecasts are only as reliable as their assumptions. So I'm not here to give you a forecast of India's growth in 2024. You are. We are making you the economist in this video. Let me give you the three things that you need to form your outlook. One, the current state of growth. Two, the state of macro fundamentals and three, the things that you need to watch out for in 2024, the assumptions. And then you, my fellow economist, can judge for yourself whether you see growth going up or going down. So do watch till the end. First things first, the current state of growth. Couldn't be better. In the first half of the fiscal year, it grew by 7.7% and the government expects it to comfortably exceed 6.5% this year. This compares to 7.2% in FY23. So coming out of the pandemic, 6.5% growth is actually quite strong. What's driving this? Well, essentially uh, four things. One, a lot of pent up demand from households. Two, a massive drive by the government to increase investment spending. Three a sharp fall in commodity prices globally that offered higher profits for uh, Indian corporates. And fourth, a largely resilient global economy, beating expectations. So then the second issue, how about the state of India's macro fundamentals? Again, great form. Core inflation has come down sharply. India's current account deficit is under control. The government has been quite serious about getting fiscal deficit under control. Um, it's also helped by the fact that tax collections this year have been uh, pretty strong. India's forex reserves is at around $620 billion at the time of filming this video, more than adequate. Both banks and corporates have cleaned up their balance sheets. Banks have enough capital. The RBI believes that financial stability is sound. The government's focus on attracting manufacturing, reforming the economy, focusing on public investments, along with our young population, makes for a compelling medium-term growth story for foreign investors. So overall, India's macro fundamentals remain strong. So we've done one, current state of growth, two, state of macro fundamentals. Now let's come to three. What are the things to watch out for in 2024? And there are four things that you need to worry about. First, this could turn out to be a crazy year for the global economy. You know how in roller coaster rides, you're right at the top and then you're sort of at the point where the ride is now going to go whoosh down and you're not quite sure if it's going to be a really bad, like I am going to vomit right now kind of fall or mm, that wasn't that bad kind of fall. That's what the global economy is looking like right now. 
Now, for the longest time, the Federal Reserve, the US's central bank, kept interest rates really low. So money was ultra cheap. Then came the pandemic and inflation started rising. Still, the Fed was like, nah, koi nahi, tiko jayega. Then inflation really started increasing. And then Fed was like, Are bapre, we need to raise interest rates to cool down the economy. And you can see how sharply they did that. But now, for a variety of reasons, despite this, the US economy remained strong. And in the middle of 2023, people were really concerned that, hey, the Fed is raising interest rates, growth is still strong, inflation is still high. Does that mean that they will need to hike rates even more? Luckily, inflation in the US has started to come down and markets have already started expecting that the cycle will turn in 2024 and interest rates will be brought down. But look, monetary policy reacts with long lags. So when you have done so much park, that is raise interest rates, there has to be price chip in the sense that growth should slow down. And we are slowly seeing that happen. The US economy is starting to lose steam. And so the question that everyone is wondering is, how bad is it going to be? Will there be a mild slowdown or will there be a recession come this time next year? Or wonder of wonders, maybe there'd be no price chip. Growth still remains resilient. Oh, and by the way, what will happen to inflation? What if it starts rising again? The Fed may then again have to start raising interest rates. So there's a lot of uncertainty around where the US is headed. Outside the US, Europe is already going through a mild recession as we speak. China is facing problems with its property sector in big trouble, high debt levels, geopolitical tensions with the US and a shrinking and aging population. The rest of Asia, on the other hand, seems better placed. So 2024 could turn out to be a really rough year for the global economy. The chances of a slowdown remain high. The IMF sees global growth at 2.9% in 2024, slightly lower than 3% in 2023 and much lower than 3.5% in 2022. Weak especially for advanced economies. Is this problematic for India? Of course it is. The biggest impact is going to come from exports. And maybe it's already happening. The fact that our IT sector has been freezing on uh, new hiring is a sign that all may not be well with their customers in developed countries. And the problem is not just exports. I mean, for instance, these companies are mass recruiters. If the mass recruiters don't recruit the masses, what will happen to consumption demand in cities like, say, Bengaluru, uh, Gurugram, Pune or Hyderabad, where most of the IT workers reside? Same goes for other cities and towns which are export hubs, be it for manufacturing or for services. So the risk of a global growth slowdown onto India's growth is it comes from two channels. One, from potentially lower exports and two, from potentially lower consumption demand for people working in those sectors. Which brings me to point number two. What will happen to consumption in 2024? Well, walk into any five-star hotel, any flight, restaurant, look at the number of SUVs on the road. It would seem that things are going great. Yet, people are piling on more and more personal loans to the extent that the RBI had to recently intervene to discourage banks and NBFCs from lending so much. RBI's own financial stability report admits that around 43% of people who are coming for personal loans are already carrying three prior loans. We've in fact done an episode of The Bond Economist on this. Um, are financially weaker households feeling the pinch? By the way, we've also had erratic monsoons. Our curry for summer crop production this year is estimated to be um, a little less than 5% lower than the production last year. This could mean that one, there are upside risks on food inflation and two, downside risks on rural consumption. Also remember the RBI too has pushed up interest rates from 4% to 6.5% and is committing to keep it higher for longer to defeat inflation. So that will naturally also be impacting growth. So the question that you need to ask yourself is, will overall consumption demand in 2024 be as reliable as it was in 2023? Third, what's going to happen to the other big driver of growth, investments. 
Now, the government has been front and center of this push. I mean, we have had record levels of investment spending that the government um, has planned for this year. That said, private investment has been a tougher nut to crack. It's happening in some sectors, but overall, it has yet to re-emerge as a strong driver of growth. And the concern is that as general elections approach and the code of conduct sets in, the pace of public investment is likely to moderate. And even if you're a company looking to make a huge investments, you may want to wait after the elections before doing that kind of commitment. So the key question is that investments that has been a major driver of growth in the past couple of years, can it still provide the same thrust in 2024? And finally, fourth, and a very important factor, politics. General elections in 2024 is going to be very important for India's macroeconomic future. Look, this channel is not about politics, rather it's about how economics reacts to politics. So two things to watch out for. In the run-up to the elections, watch out for gimmicky announcements. The government has already extended the free food scheme. Uh, by the way, do check out the Bond Economist episode on that. Uh, it has increased LPG cylinder uh, subsidies. It has taken a plethora of steps to control food inflation. And in fact, um, just before filming this video, uh, there was news floating around that the government is looking to cut petrol and diesel prices. Markets will be watching out for such populist announcements, not just by the government, but also by the opposition. Because once anyone wins, they essentially have to write a check for all those announcements. And there's the bigger issue of who actually wins. Now, again, you know, I've done an episode of The Bond Economist on this, on why markets tend to cheer whenever the BJP wins. And we saw this uh, with the state election uh, results recently. And that's primarily because markets tend to favor the pace of reforms, uh, the delivery of governance, the fiscal prudence, and as we mentioned earlier, the broader tendency to focus on improving infrastructure rather than giving handouts. But again, look, Indian elections are notoriously difficult to predict. And if voters in the country decide to bring in the opposition coalition, India, to which opinion polls admittedly uh, still suggest a low probability, then questions will arise. Questions like how strong the coalition is going to be, who the prime minister is going to be, what will be their style of governance, and what will happen to, say, the focus on reforms or fiscal discipline? Would that be reinforced or would that be diluted? So now you have all the raw materials that I have to be an economic forecaster. Current state of growth, strong, macro fundamentals, stable. But in terms of issues ahead, uncertainty around global growth, uncertainty around consumption, uncertainty around the pace of investments, and finally, the battle royale of Indian politics, general elections 2024. By the way, do remember, all of this is about near-term growth. I mean, I am a big believer in India's medium-term growth story. I think if we play our cards right, there's a lot of upside potential and growth could very well be trending up. But the way an economy works is that there'll be cycles up and down around that trend. So, will FY25 growth be higher? or lower than the 6.5% or so expected in FY24? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. For more such insights, like, share and subscribe to The Bond Economist.